Hello, I'm Douglas Cochran, and I just thought I'd share with you an interesting uh, bit of medical history. Uh, it all began with this couple, uh, Elaine and, and Raymond Rubin, who had a, a little baby boy on uh, the 1st of March, uh, 1947. The only reason I learned about it was uh, I was born on 1st of March, 1947, and so one day I googled up to see what else happened in the world. And, I came across this unusual little bit of history I thought I'd share with you. Uh, the, the birth went well, and, and Elaine was uh, pretty happy about it, and, except that she noticed when the baby was born that the, the doctor and, and the nurses were, were whispering in kind of an excited manner with each other, and then they, they rushed the baby out to, to uh, the nursery, and and so she was kind of nervous about this, and when the doctor came back in, she said, "Is my baby okay?" And he said, "He said, yes, Elaine. You have a very nice uh, little baby boy. He was almost entirely normal." And she said, "What do you mean, an almost entirely normal?" And he said, "Well, he has a an unusual condition. He he was born with a with a golden screw in his natal." And she said, "What?" He said, he said, yes, he says, I, I've never heard of such a thing, but, but uh, it's true. And uh, she, they brought the baby in to nurse, and it was a beautiful little baby other than this one interesting feature. So as you can imagine, over the next couple of days, while she remained in the hospital and the baby was in the nursery, the, all the doctors and nurses came down to the nursery to look at this baby, and, and everybody agreed they'd never seen such a thing before. Nobody knew what to do about it, and so eventually uh, Elaine and Raymond took the the baby home. They named him Randall, called him Randy, and he was a a nice little boy. He grew up, you know, healthy and and happy. Other than he was very shy about taking his clothes off in public. You know, it's like uh, you know they lived in one of those flat states where. You know, the, the main topic of this conversation is, do, should we put some more vowels in the name of our state, or, or are there any pairs of letters that we forgot to include? And, and uh, you know, so people would, would typically talk about stuff like, uh, uh, gee, is it hot enough for you? Or maybe they'd say, uh, gee, is it cold enough for you? And so Randy didn't really want anybody saying, gee, where'd you get the golden screw in your navel? So he, he was very shy about taking his clothes off in public, and so he would typically skip gym class and, and make an excuse to go up to the library to study. And he was a good student. He did well in math, and, and uh, eventually, he, when he grew up, he became a CPA. But the poor guy, he, he never had a girlfriend. He, he uh, never got married. He, he lived a very solitary life after he left his parents' home. He became a CPA, and his main interest in life was to save money so that he could go and see leading uh, umbilicologists, who are doctors that specialize in, in naval t stuff. And, and uh, so he, he found out about a man in Chicago that was you know nearby and, and that specialized in, in naval technology, and, and he saved his money and, and went up to visit him, and the doctor said, oh, never never heard of such a thing, never seen such a thing, and I have no idea what to tell you. Sorry, you know, this is just very interesting. And so he went back to work, and he saved some more money, and he went to New York to see another specialist, and got pretty much the same answer. And he, in his research, he learned that the the leading uh, umbilicologist in the world was this, this man on Fleet Street in London. And so eventually he saved up his money to go to London. And, and Randy would not fly. He, he was afraid that if the plane crashed and they found his body, that they you know, would see the, his special condition and it would be very embarrassing for him. So, so he refused to fly anywhere. So he saved his money and he took the Queen Mary and he sailed across the Atlantic to, to London, and he saw this doctor, and, and the, the doctor had been quite excited to, to uh, see him, 
But it turned out all he wanted to do was just see what it was. He had no idea of what to do about it. You know, he'd never seen such a thing in his life. And, and he just said, well, this is certainly an interesting condition, and please keep me posted on your, you know, prognosis if anything changes. And I think grows. <laughs> Who knows? So poor Randy gets back on the ship, and he's heading home, and he, he was so discouraged. He had cost so much money and effort and time. So unusual for him, he, he went down to the bar and he had a, a few drinks, and, and he had a few more drinks, and to be honest, he got a little bit soused, and, and he got to talking with this fellow from India, and they really struck up a friendship, and, and, and the Indian fellow asked him, you know, what were you doing in London? And, and, and Randy was not quite as shy as usual, and he explained that he had gone to see this doctor about this special condition, and he told the fellow what the special condition was. And the guy said, really? He says, you know, that's, that's so extremely rare. And, you know, in India, we, we figure that only about one child in, in, in 500,000 are born with a golden screw in their navel. And Randy says, what? <laughs> Other people? have this too? And he says, oh yes, it's, it's very rare, but it does happen. He says, of course, we usually remove them at birth because it's, it's kind of embarrassing, you know, to, to grow up with a golden screw in your navel. And so, you know, it's, it's as a courtesy, we, we usually take them out. Well, of course, Randy was just astounded and he got all the information he could and, and he promptly went home and started saving his money again so that he could go to India and it took him what, three years to, to save up enough money because he, he had to take the train to San Diego and then he took a ship to, to Delhi and, and then from Delhi he took a train up into the mountains and then took a local bus and, and he finally hired a mule and, and went way up in the mountains. People kept pointing him the way and, and when he got to the end of the trail there was this, this old monk sitting under a banyan tree meditating and, and he interrupted the, the old fellow's meditation to say, where is the, where is the temple of the golden screwdriver? And the old monk said, oh, oh, the temple of the golden screwdriver. And he pointed up, up in the distance and he says, see that peak up there? And there was a peak up there that had a, a ray of sunlight on it and, and it, illuminated this beautiful little tiny marble temple and he says ah the golden screwdriver the temple of the golden screwdriver and so randy he was all excited and he he left his meal with the old man and he and he hiked up the mountain it was a long hike and he he was just exhausted when he got to the top but he got there and and, and the old man had told him he says you have to you have to meditate, you have to pray, you have to be very sincere for anything to happen at the Golden Screwdriver's temple. And so he sat there, he sat there for two days, meditating, fasting, praying. And finally, uh, on the morning of the third day, everything suddenly got very quiet. And this, this ray of sunshine came down and shown on the altar. And this this golden screwdriver came floating down and landed on the altar there. And and then the sunlight dissipated and, and Randy was oh wow and he, he reaches out and he, he picks up the screwdriver and he, he opens up his robes that he's wearing and he, he looks at it The screwdriver was a, was a straight slotted screwdriver and his navel was a Phillips. So he, he puts the screwdriver back on the, on the altar and the, the beam of sunlight shines down and the, the screwdriver goes up in the sky and, and Randy walked slowly back down the mountain and he found the old man and the old monk. The monk looks at him and says, 
No good? No, not good. No screwdriver? He said, yeah, screwdriver. And he didn't know how to say it in Indian, but he, he managed to tell him that, that the screwdriver was like this, and, and what, he, what he needed was a screwdriver that was like this. Ah, the old monk says, ah, you, you need the, the temple of the Felipe screwdriver. <laughs> and he goes, what? What? He says, yes, the, the temple of the, the Felipe screwdriver. He says, look up there. And he looked up there, and up there was a peak, and a little ray of sunlight was on this gold, this beautiful marble temple. And, and he says, Felipe, the Felipe temple. Go to the temple of the Felipe screwdriver. Oh, right, he says, and God, he's just so excited. And he's, he goes running up the mountain. I mean, it's a long hike up there, and he just literally runs the whole way. He gets there, he's just puffing and panting. And then he remembers that he is supposed to meditate and pray and fast. And God, he sits there for days, you know. And that's, again, it takes two days of fasting and Finally, on the third day, I mean, the guy hasn't eaten in days. He's, he's, you know, famished. He's, he's, you know, hallucinating, and 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 all of a sudden, this this things get really quiet, and, and this little ray of sunshine comes down, and, and the, the screwdriver comes floating down and lands on the on the temple in front of the, on the altar, and he he reaches out and he takes it and he looks at it, and it's the it's a Phillips screwdriver, and he, he opens up his robe, and the screwdriver fits perfectly, perfectly into his navel, into this golden screw in his navel. And he starts to turn it. Now, Randy was a mathematician. He wasn't a mechanic. And so he starts turning it clockwise. And it gets tighter and tighter. He starts getting a belly ache, and he goes, ooh, this isn't right. So, so he tries turning it the other way, and oh, what a relief, you know. And pretty soon it starts getting loose and you can feel it's coming out and he, he turns it and turns it. It takes, it takes a long time. He turns and turns and turns. And he finally gets the thing that comes out. It's about this long. I mean, much longer than he had realized it was. You know, and it was fine threaded, so it took a lot of turns. And, but it, it does come out. He, he's so delighted. Finally, he puts the screwdriver and the screw there on the altar and his beam of light comes down and the, and the screwdriver and the screw float up together and, and the light goes away and, and Randy's sitting there and he's, he's just giving thanks oh, oh my, my prayers are answered you know my embarrassment is lifted I can go on and have a normal life and he stands up and his ass falls off <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.